In this video today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about wedding photography, specifically ceremonies. Ready? Let's rock and roll. What's good guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagan, your rock and roll photographer. Thanks for joining me guys. It's been a crazy month this month. I've been all over California. If you guys follow me, you know I've been making some videos for you guys. Specifically, I was in the Bay Area for some time. But now I'm back. It's good to be back. Today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about wedding photography, specifically wedding ceremonies, church, capturing those real moments. I'm going to give you specific details, what to watch out for and what to do as a wedding photographer. All right, guys, I'm going to start out with this important tip. When you're scheduled to photograph a church ceremony or a wedding ceremony, don't leave your lenses in the car and here's why you always want to take your library of lenses don't be content oh you'll be fine with the 2470 you know i'm just doing the church for an hour i'll be back i don't want to take my camera bag inside here's why you should never do that don't be limited in your lens selection you always want to have all your lenses with you just in case you want a wide shot just in case you want that fisheye or that 7200 how many times you wish you had that right lens at that specific moment? You just couldn't capture that moment because you did not have that lens that you need. So take your bag with you. You always want to have, like I said, all your lenses. And also, what if your battery dies? What if your flash battery goes out? What if your flash goes out <laughs> for that matter? So you always want to have all your cameras, lenses, and flashes at the ceremony site. So... You don't want to go out and say, hold on for a second, Father. <laughs> Pause this ceremony. I have to go get my camera bag. No, you cannot do that. So always take your camera bag inside where the ceremony is about to take place. All right, the next tip for you guys. There's three important moments you always want to be ready to capture. I mean, it's all important. You want to tell a story with your images. However, there's three key moments that you want to be ready for. Number one, obviously, when the bride is walking down the aisle, either with the groom or with her father. So you want to be you know, ready to shoot. Make sure your camera settings are ready to go, your ISO, your exposure. Take a few test shots. Ask your second shooter to stand you know, in the aisle and take a few test shots. Or if you see a guest walking down the aisle, take some shots. Always be ready to take that walking down, down the aisle shot. Don't miss that shot, guys. It's important. Another important moment, obviously, the rings, right, guys? You don't want to miss the rings. Now, be sure to be at a right angle with the rings. What I do is I have my second shooter stand in between the aisle, ready to shoot that standard shot while I'm in the front shooting from the side because you can always get a nice shot from the side either from the groom side or the bride side use that 7200 and get in close get in close with that shot and take the ring shot from the side so if you have two photographers have one of the guys do a standard shot in between the aisles just straight on the bride and groom will be standing facing each other like this and you want to take that shot right in straight ahead in the aisle so that's what i do guys i really like that side angle so i hit the side angle my second shooter hits the front angle of the ring so don't miss that ring shot the bride's gonna kill you if you miss that shot guys that's like that is important <laughs> and lastly the kiss when the ceremony is about to end that famous first kiss the groom opens the veil and you know you may kiss the bride moment Bam, shoot that shot, guys. Don't miss that shot. So those are the three key moments you want to be ready to shoot. Put that in your mind and make sure to capture those moments or else you might be in trouble. <laughs> uh, who knows? If you have a cool bride, you know, I don't know. 
you don't want to you, you never want to miss moments guys because it's just gonna throw you off and you're gonna feel bad and the next ceremony tip i want to talk about is it's always a good idea to kind of know the rules of the church or wherever you're shooting the ceremony certain churches they have their own rules you cannot use flash or you cannot you know step on this portion of the church or that and this and that but at the same token guys it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission right guys a lot of times when you ask, you know, for f permission, they say, no, you cannot do that. You know, never step foot on this part, you know, never go here or never shoot there. You always, you only shoot here and there. So <laughs> it's better to say, oh, I'm sorry, guy. I didn't know the rules. But at the same time, you already got the shot, right? <laughs> That's awesome. That's a rock and roll right there. All right, guys, moving forward. So if you are doing wedding photography, it's crucial to have a backup camera body, okay? So if something happens to your camera and it just decides not to cooperate that day, you always want to have something to fall back on, guys. So imagine yourself, you're about to shoot the wedding and you only have one camera and it doesn't turn on. You know, what do you do? It's not your fault. It's it's technology. Things go, you know, belly up anytime, you know? So, um always have a backup body guys you don't want to be that photographer that's just you know just doesn't know what to do at that moment so that's very dangerous especially when you're doing a wedding all by yourself okay i don't recommend that i don't recommend that at all guys i don't care what the budget is don't give me the excuse that you know the bride and groom doesn't have a budget they couldn't afford two photographers one photographer is just it's it's too much work number one too much stress on you and you're going to be all over the place that day and you're just not going to get the shots. You're not going to get the rest. And like I said, don't put out the excuse that the budget is this, the budget is that. No, my if you, want, if you like my work and if you want our company, if you want me to photograph your wedding, then minimum two photographers. All right, guys? Like I said, and if you don't have two bodies, that's fine as long as you have that second photographer there, guys right all right guys my next tip for all you wedding photographers out there coordinate with your second shooter always make sure you know who's shooting what which angle what lens so you're not confused you're not you know you're taking time and doing that that second the last second always coordinate with your second shooter Number one, you don't want to get the same shots that he's taking. Number two, you might miss a shot. You might have a bad angle. He might have a better angle, he or she. So always coordinate with your second shooter. Just um, make a game plan, you know, create a game plan. Okay, I'm shooting this part. I'll be in the back of the church. I'll be in the front of the church. And at the same token, guys, not only should you coordinate with your second photographer, chances are you're going to have a video crew there. And a lot of video crews, the videographers, they have more guys. So it's also important to coordinate with them as well. You don't want to piss each other off and get in each other's shots, guys. You know, in the past, I've gotten in, each, in someone's shot or they've gotten in front of my camera at a key moment. And just that, that's just too frustrating, guys. Imagine missing a shot. Imagine missing that ring shot because a video guy was just blocking your angle of view. You know what I mean? So always coordinate, not only with your second shooter, but coordinate with the video crew. Always be nice to them. And, you know, they'll be nice to you back. You never want confrontation, especially when you've never worked with this crew in the past. And you guys are new and, you know, you're jockeying for position. And, you know, it's just you don't want that. You don't want guests at weddings to watch you guys fight over who's, you know, you're in my way. Get the hell out of my way. Never curse at them. You know, always be professional and polite. Even though if they're not being professional and polite, always remember you're on stage, guys. Everybody's watching you, especially the guests. So if they're being rude and obnoxious and you're being professional, guess who they're going to like more? That's you. So always be professional. Always be kind. Coordinate with the video crew. Don't piss each other off. Don't piss each other off. And try not to get in one's way. You know, they're doing their job too. So a lot of photographers, they might think, well, we're the photographers. We're important, not the video guys. They're just capturing, you know, it's, it's a security video camera. <laughs> not nowadays, guys. Nowadays, it's a full-on cinematic production. So 
these guys are good too and you know always respect each other and always have a good time you know what i mean so don't piss each other off my next tip when you're shooting a ceremony especially when it's a beautiful big church when you're doing a wide shot and by the way do a wide shot okay capture the moments in front of the where all the action is going on but take a quick moment to go back in the back of the church or have your second photographer do this this is key guys always take a nice wide shot of the action you want to get the whole you know scene of the church use a 14 millimeter or you know 60 if you don't have a 14 millimeter use a 16 millimeter here's a tip never use flash don't use flash when you're doing this because chances are this church is huge that flash is going to hurt you not help you what that flash is going to do is it's going to eliminate the, the the foreground and all your actions in the back <laughs> so that's not really going to help you guys out so turn off your flash when you're doing that super wide shot of the church okay if you don't have a if you're not using a tripod and chances are you're not uh, i hardly use tripods at weddings because it's such a run and gun situation but Boost up your ISO and, you know, capture that shot natural light. Boost up your ISO. Modern cameras, they do a great job, any manufacturer. And try to hold it steady, maybe 60th of a second, ISO 2000 or 2500, 80th of a second. Boom. Hold it steady. Now, you're shooting raw, guys, right? So you can probably boost it up when you're post-processing this image. So if it's a little dark, it's okay. So, yeah. Use natural light here, guys. Do not use flash when you're doing that super wide shot and get that super wide shot. They'll love you for it. All right, guys. So what happens after the ceremony, after the bride and groom walks out of the church? Usually they go back to the church and we start doing family formals. Right, guys? Take family pictures, immediate family. You want to always stress this to your clients that you don't want to take a picture with every guest. Uh, only stick to the close relatives. You don't want to be there too long, guys. So um, when you're doing family group shots, take a few shots. Make sure to get the bride and groom, of course, uh, looking at your lens, looking at each other. Use a few different lighting techniques. Take a few shots. If you only have one speed light, take a few shots, uh, direct flash. Take a few pictures, bouncing the flash off the wall. Um, adjust the color temperature. Don't shoot wide open when you're doing group shots. 5.6, 6.3. I wouldn't even shoot at 4, guys. You know, 5.6, 6.3. And you want to get everything sharp and in focus. Okay, guys? And if you're doing a big group, let's say there's three rows of people, you always want to, like I said, shoot, even if you can shoot at F7.1 or F8, you always want to focus on the people standing in the front and everything, everything else will be in focus. So that's what I do. I crank up the aperture to a low aperture setting and shoot it. So, and like I said, you never want to shoot 2.8 or f4. So, use a few different te lighting techniques and see whatever looks best. And what I do is, and this is what I prefer actually, I use off camera flash and my speed light. So, I use two flashes. I set up an off camera flash with a stand and I, I have that ready to go. So, as soon as the ceremony's done, my assistant or second photographer brings that stand over and we shoot a few shots with the off-camera flash and my speed light. So what that does is it adds dimension to the group shot. Big difference, guys, versus just your flash on the camera or using an off-camera flash with a combination of those two flashes. That's ideal for a church setup, you know. And I understand if you're, you know, run and gun and you can't set it up, have your second shooter just hold it. Have your second shooter hold it remotely. If you can't set up a stand or if you don't have a stand, have them hold that second speed light. You know, sync those two together and have fun. That's what I do with group shots. All right, my next tip, be sure to get exterior shots and interior shots of the church before the ceremony starts. Get there a little before and take a few pictures outside of the church and a few pictures inside so they can have nice interior pictures you know try to have, not have guests in the shots if you do that's fine but try to get little details of those of that moment they'll appreciate it your your clients will appreciate those moments all right my next tip try to get the pictures in between what i mean by that is for example the bride stepping out of the car 
those shots are awesome, guys. Those shots, uh, those are definitely keepers. You know, have your second shooter stand by the limousine, and as soon as she's getting out of the car, take some candid pictures of her getting out of the car, going inside the church. Uh, shots in between, you can use a 7200. What I do is I take candid pictures. I never want the whoever I'm taking pictures of to know I'm taking pictures of them. So I'm quite a bit away and I'm just, you know, taking pictures with two, a 200 millimeter candid moments. And uh, those are real candid shots. So if they know that the camera's right in their face, they'll freeze up. They won't quite be a candid that you want. Use a telephoto and just rock it. My next important tip for all you wedding photographers, never be the reason why you guys show up late to the ceremony. You are at the park taking pictures and you know everybody loses track of time. The bride and groom and bridal party, they're having a good time, guys. It's their wedding day. They're maybe drinking and taking photos and you know, sometimes people lose track of time. So take it upon yourself to be responsible for what time we need to be at the church, okay? Chances are you're the coordinator of the wedding will not be at the park session, the photo shoot at the park before the ceremony. So it's on you guys, the photographers, to take initiative and don't lose track of time. Always put into consideration the drive times you'll, you'll have. So for example, the photo shoot ends at the park and you need to be at church and there's 30 minutes to, to get there. It takes 30 minutes drive time, right? Put that into consideration, guys. You know, you always want to get to the ceremony 30 minutes early. You know, so you can freshen up, set up, so the bride and groom can, you know, freshen up and, and just relax a little bit. You never want to rush it and this and that. So always take the initiative. And what I do is when I get to the park and I know that the church is after the park, what I do is I stop and I ask the bride and groom, okay, it's two o'clock, for example. It's two o'clock, church is at four, right? We need to be at church at 3.30, correct? Yes, no, okay. Talk to the bride and groom at that moment and just let them know, okay, we have one hour to shoot. So like I said, when you right when you get to the park, stop everything, consult with the bride and groom and say, look, we only have one hour or two hours Let's get this done. We need to leave at a certain time. So you never want to be the reason. The photographer never wants to be the reason why you're late. You know, If you, they're late, you know what? Who cares, right? They're late. It's on them, right? You still get blamed, but you know that deep down inside, you know, it's not your fault. So, you, you know, the photographer will still get blamed, guys. That's just the name of the game here. But And last but not least, everyone, and this is the most important always have fun. <laughs> I always have a good time. Don't be nervous. Don't be stressed. When I was starting out in wedding photography, yeah, I would get nervous, you know, during the ceremony, right before the ceremony is about to start. So get your cameras in order and, and you know, you, you should be fine, guys. Don't be nervous. Have fun. Treat the wedding like it's your friend's wedding, you know. You're there with an awesome camera, you know, you, you're, it's your friend getting married. It's your friend getting married. There's no contract, nothing, right? Just pretend like you're just there with a fancy, nice camera and you're taking pictures. And that'll help with the nerves, with the butterflies in your stomach. You know, I've shot thousands of weddings in my career and, you know, from all walks of life, all types of ceremonies. And, you know, I still get a little nervous. You know, I make sure that my camera's ready to go and, and, but you know, it's all muscle memory now. It's I could I could shoot a wedding with my with a blindfold on, guys. <laughs> I've been doing this for so long, so so it's time to pass on all the information that I've learned, trial and error, onto you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. Hopefully you got a thing or two. All you wedding photographers, uh, you know, beginner photographers, pros that are just you know shooting weddings. And, you know, hopefully you got a thing or two from this video. So that's my whole goal of this video right here today. Wedding ceremony tips for you guys. If you like tips like this, if you like videos like this, and if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, Vahography, this is a channel where I talk about all things photography. Yes, we even do camera and lens reviews. 
Uh, but we do videos like this one, you know, talking about photography, photography tutorials, you know, day of, photo shoots, weddings, you name it. So we have a blast here, guys. So like and subscribe, you know, I'll appreciate it very much. And also hit that bell notification, guys, because uh, I guess YouTube, they don't notify subscribers that I posted a video unless you hit that bell notification, too. So that's important too that's important as well so anyway thanks for watching guys this is vahography i'm vahagan your rock and roll photographer and we'll see you on the next video all right guys don't be nervous have a good time when you're doing wedding photography at church capture those moments and just rock and roll I wanted to make a quick little video today. The biggest tips I can give you guys, if this is your first time, you know, you're about to go ahead and uh, photograph your first wedding at a church. Some churches are very strict. They have a strict policy. And some churches, they're not too strict. No one likes a photographer that cannot follow rules. Clients don't like them. Guests, when you see that you're not professional, when the guests, the invited guests see that you're trampling over yourself and you're getting all mad and you know, you're frustrated because there's so many rules and regulations to follow. You always carry your, your bag, all the lenses you need, bring it all to the church. Have one bag ready, you're 24 to 70, 7200. Sorry guys, I had to talk low in there, but uh, final tip I wanna give you guys, and like I said, this was a sh uh, short but informative video for all you beginner photographers. Lastly, I wanna let you know about ceremonial photography at weddings. Just have fun, always have fun. Capture the important moments, guys. And remember, you're not videographers. You're not there to capture every single second the bride and groom moves around. Don't do that, guys. Only capture the, the selling moments, the important moments. Try to tell a story with your photographs. Capture the important moments, tell a story with your photographs, and you'll be just fine. All right, guys. Again, like I said, this was a quick little video on wedding ceremonies. <laughs> I've been doing this for years, guys. I've shot probably thousands of weddings in my career, and I kind of know what I'm talking about, guys. So what I do is my style is a nice pair of jeans, the dark jeans, maybe some nice shoes, and a nice sport coat or jacket or blazer. It looks nice. It feels good. Oh, right. Landmark. San Francisco Landmark. I forget the name. Catch you later, guys. <laughs>